Hello people, how are you doing on this lovely day? It's Makeda Valletta, also known as the Renaissance Amazon and the Body Scientist. And I'm live right now on my IG page, the Renaissance Amazon. Um, I will be posted to my YouTube page, the Renaissance Amazon. So be sure to follow me in both places. I'm sorry I don't have a mic, hopefully you can hear me okay. But just in case you're unfamiliar with me, I am a strength and conditioning coach, exercise physiologist, nutritionist, doula, sacred sexual educator, dancer. I have committed my life to studying all the ways we can take our body to its highest level. So I'm into optimal performance, which then encompasses optimal health, okay? And um, I'm into holistic health, so that's looking at the whole body. And sexual health is a part of our overall health, okay? Sexual health, you know, meaning, of course, absence of disease, but also orgasmic energy um, and all of that, all right? So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about what is healing, a celibacy healing or a sex healing, okay? And what inspired this conversation is something that I've thought about um, a lot but um, over the years, but there's been interviews going viral of Maya, the singer, who said that she's been celibate for seven years and that it's made her have so much clarity and people are applauding that. Um, so I wanna talk about that because I can't speak for her, I'm not her, but I tend to think that people who are celibate for years on end have other issues, okay, and that they are not healing, but they are blocking. And I will explain why. First of all, all of the sex ed that we get in this country, and probably every other country, is fear-based, okay? It's about, you know, I'm sorry, a loud train is going by. Yeah. It's about, you know, oh, penis, vagina, pregnancy, and diseases. That's all that's taught. Right? There's so much more that, and then you have religion. Most people were raised religious, whether it be Judaism, Christianity, or Islam, and it suppresses. You know, the, all three of those religions teach to suppress um, our sexual nature, especially women. It can have that effect on men, but it especially um, has an effect, a serious suppressive effect on women's sexuality. And just the idea that sex is nasty or dirty, which is ridiculous because we all come from sex, okay? Just like this idea that the nude body is dirty, okay? Ridiculous, okay? We were born naked and we are here because our parents had sex, all right? That's what brought us here. So it's a very, um, and but the only, but reproduction is not the only purpose for sex. Some people try to act like the only reason we have sex is for reproduction. That's totally not true, okay? Sexuality and spirituality are of the same continuum. Let me say that again. Sexuality and spirituality are of the same continuum. So some people ask me, what, do you, what is a sacred sexual educator? And I have videos where I explain that. But it's it, basically, just to put it in a sentence, it's acknowledging that. It's acknowledging the sacred sexual, the, the, I mean, the, the, the very healing and powerful energy that is involved with sex. And if that energy is perverted, hence via grape okay i'm not going to say i'm not going to usually i just say the words but i'm not going to do that because i'm going to post this on youtube and then i'm going to get all these things so i'm going to play the game like everybody else and use code words but if it's grape or essay okay i think you know what essay is if you don't let me know i'll write it below but those things and and and, and touching you know um, minors inappropriately those things can lead to serious trauma that people never get over okay so when things are when things are perverse and um, you know violations, it can really destroy somebody on a deep level. Um, but and when somebody and I'm open minded, I'm open minded about sex, even if it's not something I'm into. But there's certain things that people are into that are so perverse that it's saying something is wrong with their soul, something is wrong with that person's spirit. Okay. As long as you have two consenting adults, they're not freaking blood family, uh, you are not messing with, you know, what I said, two consenting adults, I don't have to mention people that are not adults, and also humans, okay? As long as it's in those realms, I feel like nobody should hold any shame. 
Now, this idea that, that sex is dirty and, like, you know, unholy is the reason why so many people cheer on celibacy for purity. I have clarity now. I'm going to tell you, I definitely wouldn't have clarity if I had, did not have sex for seven years, okay? Because there's so many healing properties in sex, okay? When we orgasm, we release all kinds of beneficial hormones for ourselves. It affects our hormones, but also that our partner can absorb, okay? So even solo sessions with yourself is healing, but when you're connecting with a partner and you are building energy together, exchanging energy absorbing energy it can be extremely healing okay um and i mean look at how happy gay men are okay gay men are so happy um they are funny okay but they're always you know they're like probably the happiest people on earth There's, there could be a not a better name for them but you know why gay men are still men okay and the only reason why straight men don't have more sex is because women say no. It's because of women. Women, women are the, le the, the limiting factor, usually, as to why straight men don't have more sex, okay? But when you have two men, men are easy, okay? People talk about women are easy. No, nobody's easier than a man. Nobody is easier than a man, okay? Men are easy. So now you have two men. All you get is yes and yes. You get sex over here, sex over here, sex over here, sex over here. That's all you get. And gay men are super happy. Now, if you look at lesbians, now I am a bisexual woman, so don't, you know, people don't care about the bisexuals and that whole LGBTQ thing. <laughs> we don't ever really identify that, nobody really, but I'm just saying, okay, I'm half a lesbian, all right? And lesbians a lot of times are so mad, all right? Like that's why I stopped going to lesbian clubs when I was in my early 20s. Because people are always fighting. I'm like, if we all love beautiful women, shouldn't we be happy? Like, why are people fighting? And lesbian couples have so much abuse. Lesbian relationships. I'm not saying all, but they, to me, have more abuse than straight ones. I have a friend who's a security guard at a club in Atlanta. He said on lesbian night, they get the most fights. And lesbians don't have nearly as much sex as men, as gay men. You can even look at some old lesbian couples. They be looking all dried up like they don't have sex, you know. Um, and that's what you look like when you don't have sex, dried up, okay? There's no way that someone's having a lot of good sex and that they're not going to be glowing. There's no way that someone's having a lot of good sex and they're going to look dried up. No, okay? Because having a lot of good sex and building that strengthens your chi, your life force, energy. Lesbians a lot of times, and I'm not saying all of them, but they start looking dried up, all right? And again, I'm not saying all of them. But you see a lot more dried up looking lesbian couples than you do gay ones, all right? And lesbians be, have a lot more anger issues. And there's a lot of them, okay, who, not all, but there are some who don't want anything in their vagina at all, or they feel like if their woman wants something in her vagina, it makes them mad. There are all kinds of pleasure points in the vaginal canal. It doesn't mean that, and, and, and you can do that without a penis. The fingers can do a lot. The fingers can do some things that it, a penis can't, okay? And vice versa. So if you're in a lesbian relationship and you can't tell your girlfriend that you would like fingers inside of you or something, there's pleasurable points inside the vagina, but there are lesbians who block that all off. Nope, no inside of there, none of that. That, and then, and usually, you don't really usually see men who, I don't care what happens, I don't care who breaks their heart. It's rare to see men to become celibate because a woman did them dirty. And I would think that was weird. Like, Devon Franklin, um, um, what's it, what should we call it? Um, what's her face? Megan Goods, Megan Goods' ex-husband. Which, Megan Goods' birthday's coming up. She is, her birthday's seven days after mine, born in the same year, so whoop, whoop. But anyhow, um, Megan Good's ex-husband, Devon Franklin, when she met him, he said he had been celibate for seven years. I find that very strange. If I met a man who told me he was celibate for seven years, I would think something was wrong with him. I'm dead ass serious. Okay? Um, who, Lenny Kravitz says something like that recently. 
And I just feel like, uh, and then you have people like Venus, who's still like a 44-year-old version, and then you have uh, the chick, um, the Nigerian chick from um, Insecure, who's like a 40-year-old version. I think that's crazy. I think it's a waste of life. And I think that all of that comes from this idea that sex is dirty, or you're only supposed to be doing it with your husband, and somebody who really loves you, which is like really ridiculous, because good sex is a necessity like you can say you love to eat a home-cooked meal from your family from your grandmother from your mom and people who really love you yes that's going to hit different but does that mean that you only eat stuff that your family cooks like you might love food from your family the most it might be the most nourishing but are you only going to eat when they cook and you're like i'm not eating nothing else only if my mom cooks it only if my grandmother cooks it that's ridiculous because you still need food to live and be healthy same thing true with sex and sexual energy so yeah, it could be great if it's with somebody you're in love with, but somebody might not be in love for years. Does that mean that you don't need good sex? You still need good sex, okay? Um, and I just feel like people cheer that on, and I again, I can't speak for, you know, people can say, you know, do what they do, but I don't feel like the conversation is balanced enough. I feel like there's this um, perception that sex just confuses your mind and throws you further off balance and is a distraction and it can be but that's the only narrative that's told there's no talk about the healing properties people used to say oh if you break up with somebody you shouldn't just go like let's say you have a breakup some people hold the the, the idea that you shouldn't just go mess with somebody else other then, then there's a saying that the easiest way to get over someone is to get under someone right I don't know, for me, I find that to be, like, when I've had breakups, I don't, I'm not looking to sex to, like, run from or to make up for. But good sex does take your mind, especially when you have good sex, okay? It can take your mind off of a, of a breakup for a minute and help you to transform those feelings. Okay, because the, the main thing about dealing with emotions and traumatic things is being able to, to deal to transform those feelings and not let it just sit there. So for me, I have found it helpful that if I whenever I had a breakup and I'm like, this dude didn't appreciate me, I've just wasted my time. And the men that I've been in relationships with never were the people that have the strongest sexual connections with, with anyway. So the be people I've had the best sex with have never been the people that I was in a relationship with. So, we break up. I'm like, okay. I'm going to go get some amazing sex to help, you know, channel this orgasmic energy. <laughs> help get you off my mind. Because getting over someone is a process. But good sex with somebody else is a part of that process for me. And I find it to be healing. Okay? And it's not something for me that is like compensation or... I'm running from, I deal with my emotions, I write in my journals, I, but there's never been anything that's happened to me, and I've gone through some traumatic things, there's never been anything where I'm just like, well, I don't want to have sex at all for years, no. Can celibacy be healing? Well, if I think about it, it's like, well, you're cutting yourself off from any type of, you know, building energy with someone, because yes, if you're exchanging energy with a toxic person, that's not good. You don't want to do that. So cutting off exchanges with toxic people is bad. But if you're building, I mean, cutting off exchanges with toxic people is good. So I go out train. But if you have somebody, not everybody has access to this, but if you have somebody that can give you healing energy that, you know, can, then that can be transformative. That changes your hormones. Okay, you go too long without good sex, you have a bad attitude. Okay, dudes who can't get chicks, and as a woman, any pretty woman has dealt with this. Dudes who cannot get chicks, they be in a bad mood. They're assholes. They're mean. Okay, that's what people talk about BDE, which is big dick energy. That's because men who are wound out are usually pretty nice and chill and cool. You know, the ones who can't get women, a lot of times are a holes. Okay. And then woman, okay, there was, a, there was a woman who called herself a well-fucked woman. Um, a woman who's not getting good sex, I mean, like, good mind-blowing sex, 
she'll have an attitude and people know that they're like oh you need some dick you know what i'm saying why do people say that because it is healing and because going too long without it and suppressing yourself can make you be in a bad mood okay let I me mean, look at all the, the mass shootings that happened because a man couldn't get a woman a dude couldn't talk to a chick which is not acceptable or an excuse but i'm just saying Unsexual suppression um especially when it's when it's not intentional can make somebody crazy now if you're intentionally doing that you know it may not make you crazy but it may not be the most healing thing that you can do so i think that if people learn more about like the healing properties behind sex like they wouldn't always think that oh i just need to stop having sex completely because it's a sin or something i don't know i don't know or you had a bad breakup and now you don't want to have sex for five years it's crazy to me it's a waste of life okay and let me see one of the reasons why i'm going to say that like i remember talking to older people people in their 70s and they're like you know you get to an age where sometimes your, your body doesn't work the same and you wish you had more sex i know a woman she told me now she just thinks about all things she wish she did when she was younger but she spent so much time talking about what she wasn't going to do, which a lot of women do. Um, and now she's like, damn. And so for me, this is also why I take care of my, my entire body, including my sexual organs, because I want to be able to be sexually active until I die. Okay. And hopefully that's a long time from now at an old age. So you can put the work in men and women can put the work in to make sure that their genitals stay strong and healthy and able to perform. But it's not just something that is guaranteed if you just sit around and just let your body age and you don't put in the work. Yes, good sex is a great stress relief. Now, to me, it's not an escape. It's not going to take away from my problems, you know. Like, you can't have problems, but I'm just going to have sex all day and not deal with my problems. No, you got to deal with it. But you have to have ways to, to transform energy. And I feel like great sex is a good way. And for me, me personally, I'm just saying, I would never cut off my male friends for a man. Because I have male best friends who've been my friend for years, okay? A decade or more. And in that time, I might have been in two or three relationships. And my friends are still here. Those men are not. And me personally, I'm talking about me, because I know it's a priority to me. Some people put money in the bank. They have savings and they're thinking about saving for the future for retirement. I think about that with sex. I cannot have a situation in my life where I just don't have a source of good sex. Like, that just can't happen, okay? I can't be like, I have nobody. What am I going to do? Sit here and twiddle my thumbs. No. Good sexual partners have value. And it doesn't even mean that you want to be in a relationship with them. They might be a good friend of yours. And you guys understand each, you're sexually compatible. You understand each other sexually. Okay? And if I've known somebody for 10, 15 years and we've been sexual and we're good friends and we're not in a relationship, that means that person is not a threat. Like, that's not somebody that I'm going to fall in love with. Like, if I meet somebody and I fall in love with them, that person over here... It's not a threat because I'm not in love with this person. If I, if I were, we'd be together, okay? So sometimes a connection with somebody is purely just a sexual um, healing thing. And there needs to be more talk about... Somebody said when I said male BF, you mean just friends or something else? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say BF, I said best friend. I said I had male best friends. So a best friend is my best friend. Do I have sex with my best friends? I have. I don't always. Like I have I have I have friends who maybe we had sex years ago and now we're just it's like we're not even it's not even sexual anymore. We're just fucking friends. You know what I'm saying? So um so yeah. I think as a woman, it's extremely difficult to find good sex in the first place, all right? So, to just cut myself off from it for years and then try to find, no, I wouldn't do that. And I just feel like there's a lot of cheering on of the 44-year-old version of Venus or the fact that Maya was celibate for seven years. And it's like, I think that's kind of avoidant. 
when something, and I don't know why she decided to become celibate for seven years, but a lot of people, it's because of trauma. So for me, I, if you become celibate because of trauma for years, I could see maybe, maybe I understand if you do it for a month or two, but when you're doing that for years, I feel like that's actually avoided because when something traumatic happens to us, if we don't deal with it, like if you just kind of like try to, you know, ignore it or try to just compartmentalize it and keep on going. It can leave imprints in our energy fields and cause stagnant energy. You don't want stagnant energy. You don't want stagnant sexual energy. Thank you so much for the compliment. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, you don't want stagnant sexual energy. Okay, so just remember, sexual energy is healing energy. But even if you choose to be celibate, okay, or you're, not, or you're celibate not by choice, you want to move the sexual energy. You need to get the sexual energy and the orgasmic energy moving in your body. That's so important, okay? So, if you're if someone is celibate by choice or not, you at least want to have good masturbation sessions and cultivate your sexual energy and keep that arousal alive because strong chi is a sign of good health. When you start losing your chi and your life force and you have no libido, that's actually a sign of declining health. It's not a good thing. Good sex, feeling feeling um, desiring good sex, arousal, those are all healthy things. That's a part of a healthy lifestyle, okay? A healthy life. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody asked, what kind of crystal is this? This is a clear quartz crystal around my neck. Um, so I think I made my point. Like a lot of times when I'm done, I'm like, oh, I forgot to say this, I forgot to say that. But I think you get the point that sex you know, when with the right partner, it can be very healing, okay? Sexual energy, orgasmic energy, and of course, you can give yourself an orgasm, and that's great. I find that connecting with a person is even greater. It's like the difference between massaging yourself. I can massage my thigh all day, but it doesn't feel nearly as good as another hand, somebody else's hand massaging my thigh, right? It's not nearly as relaxing as somebody else doing it. So it's the same thing, but like massaging your own shit is better than nothing. If that's all you have. You know, so I just feel like the shame, there's too much shame, you know, put in, into sex and sexuality, a lot of that, all of it has to do with colonialism and religion, okay, the world's three main religions, Christianity, Judaism, and um, Islam, okay, even me right now with my skin out, I couldn't be in it, I couldn't be wearing this in an Islamic country, I have zero interest to go to an Islamic country where I have to be walking all covered up, I ain't going. Not going. Not going. Not unless I get paid millions or something to go do to, to do a job and leave. Nope. Not me. It's hot. My skin's going to be well moisturized and out. So the sun can kiss my skin. I can try to not just get my Medea, but testosterone and all other goodies that the sun gives us. Okay. Um, I don't want to be in a place where women are sexually suppressed. That's what... I'm not trying to offend people, but... Islam does suppress women with all those damn clothes, okay? And in France just now, they had a, a hijab ban. People were mad. Oh, how could they ban hijabs? Well, if you go to their country, they make you cover up. If you go to their country, I can't walk around in this dress. I gotta put on all these clothes. And I have to respect that. So respect other people's rules when they say take that shit off. You know? You look at all the ancient statues, you see nudity all around the world, okay? So, for me, first and foremost, I'm into optimal health. That's what I've committed my life to, studying all the ways we could take our body to its highest level. That's why you don't even see me wearing makeup like that anymore. Like, I've always, whenever I wore makeup, it was never every day, it would be here and there. And I'm not against it, but I haven't put makeup on my face in like a year, okay? I'm just so freaked out about all the chemicals that's in it. Um, I don't care about what I put on my skin. <laughs> What I put inside my mouth, what I put inside my vagina, like everything, okay? Maintaining microbiomes. It's a lot of what I'm doing physically, like when I'm done here, I'm gonna go walk to the post office and ship my skin moisturizer, in case you don't know. I make a very good skin food, okay? That will have your skin looking lovely, and everybody that's used it loves it. So I'm gonna go walk, not drive, to the post office to get some sun, get some walking. Like my whole entire, the way I live my life is about 
health first, okay? And I know myself, I will be in a very bad mood if I don't have some good orgasms. And not just that, but there's reflexology points in the vaginal canal. There's reflexology points on the penis, okay? I did a video some years ago, Why Does Size Matter? If you check that video, I get more into depth about that. And it even talks about why size matters because of those reflexology points. And also why sex can be healing because, you know, you have those reflexology points being stimulated during intercourse, okay? So that's another thing that can make sex healing. Because when something traumatic happens to us, it gets lodged into our body. And for women, it can be lodged into the vaginal canal, okay? Oh, thank you for the compliments, guys, about the makeup. Thank you. Um, I do think that it, like, can highlight the eyes and the lips and stuff, make things, but I just... Maybe I'll put it on again one day, but... <laughs> and even clothes, a lot of these clothes are made from synthetic fabrics. I don't even want this on my skin. Like, I just walk around naked and be moisturized. <laughs> we got to put on these plastic clothes. It's bad for our health. You know, so many problems. Um, but anyhow, I'm just here to speak for the fact that sex is healing, very healing. Of course, you want to be with a, 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 a healthy, sane partner. Um, who can tune into your body, tap into your body, even as a man. Um, a lot of times, a lot of times, you know, men are doing so much of the work during sex and men don't always focus on what they're feeling. Even from a, from a, for a man, a woman was working some sexual healing magic on him and he just decided to just relax, okay? Because men have to usually be in their head and be thinking about performing. But what if she said, no, don't even think about that. Just let me, let me, let me work on your body, okay? Let me work on your body. And you just focus on what you're feeling. You just focus internally. Because I don't think men do that enough. Um, I think that men and women hold trauma differently. Um, and men are more external. Women are more internal. Women's sexual energy sucks in. Men's sexual energy projects out. You know, um, so it could be a little bit different. But still, um, sexual healing can... Sexual healing is real. Whether it's a man or a woman. And I don't see men be like, oh my God, this girl broke my heart. I'm going to be celibate for three years. Oh my God, this girl broke my heart. I'm going to be gay now. Okay, I've never seen a man turn gay because a woman broke his heart. If anything, he might start doing other chicks dirty and say, F these witches. I want to curse and just say whatever, but I'm not because I'm going to post this on YouTube. But they might be like, F these witches. But they still having sex with chicks though. But you have women who go through something traumatic and now they're like, oh, I'm a lesbian now because this man. No, that's off balance. That's being avoidant and not dealing with the trauma. You think, okay, a man did this to me. I'm not messing with any men anymore. All men are bad. I'm a lesbian now. That means you're not really a lesbian at heart. You're doing that because you're trying to run from something because of trauma. I'm not bisexual because of trauma. I think being bisexual is actually more balanced than being gay, okay, or lesbian. Because a lot of times it comes from trauma. I'm not going to say all the time, but a lot of gay men who are just straight up gay. I'm not talking about bisexual, okay? But a lot of gay men, is coming from trauma. And maybe that's true for some bisexual men, but definitely for gay men and definitely for lesbians. A lot of them is trauma. Not 100%, but probably at least 90, okay? And there may not be anything wrong with that. Maybe that is, well, there's wrong with them having the trauma. There's wrong with people doing stuff to them when they were young. That's wrong. But... Then now, like if you have a, a, a young boy who was violated and now he turns gay or same thing with a girl, perhaps that's what they need to heal, you know? Perhaps that's what they, maybe they're gravitating towards that because that's what they need to heal as well, you know? I don't know. Um, I just know for me that's not the case, okay? Luckily, thankfully, I don't have any sexual trauma, okay? I wasn't raised with a bunch of religious dogma. They have my mind all messed up. And I don't have daddy issues, okay? One of those things usually leads um, women to that kind, of, that kind of place, all right? And in my class, sexual strength training that I taught, I don't have my egg, but the crystal eggs that women would work with in their vaginal canal and the dancing would help a lot with kind of dissolving trauma, okay? So all this stuff is really important. Yeah, so with that being said, I'm going to get my stuff together. Uh, I'm going to get ready so I can go to the gym, do my little workout so I can keep my body healthy. 
But yeah, you could answer the question, you know, what do you think? Because a lot of people think celibacy is healing. Do you think that? Do you think it would be for you? Do you think if you went years without sex that you would feel more clarity? I don't. Not for me. Not for me. So I just had to speak. I just had to just give the other side of the story because I feel like it's just one narrative. Oh, celibate. Oh, this person's been celibate for 10 years. Let's collapse. That's not, to me, I'm thinking, why? That's a waste of a life. Why are you wasting your life? Why? For seven, eight, nine, ten years and you're not having sex? What the hell? Good sex is one of the best things ever. Why would you do that? Like, no. And this whole talk about not having sex before marriage is also asinine because sexual compatibility matters. So you should never marry somebody and you don't even know if you're sexually compatible. That's a recipe for a miserable life and a recipe for a disaster. And all this comes from the, oh, I don't want to be looked at as dirty and oh, God's going to punish me and all this religious dogma that got people messed up, okay? Really messed up. But anyhow, tengo hambre and I'm going to go eat. And uh, if you learned something from this video, please like it, please share it. Sharing is caring. Um, if you're on Instagram, follow me on YouTube at the Renaissance Amazon. And if you're on YouTube, follow me on Instagram, okay? The Renaissance Amazon underscores in between each word. Make sure you follow my backup page, Copper Showgirl. I'll write them all below. Follow me at the Body Scientist, all that good stuff. Okay? And um, you can check out my other sacred sexual videos. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.